Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Service Mesh Con 2021 Europe. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so I am uh, Chris Campbell and I was a member of the program committee and that's why I'm here talking to you today. Uh, and we'd all like to welcome you uh, to, uh, to the conference today. Um, and so I've been working with this uh, wonderful group here as, uh, alongside the, the, the people from the Linux Foundation to kind of put together the program today. Uh, and so hopefully it's going to be a, a great conference. Uh, I thought I'd start out today by doing a little uh, sharing on my own experience with Service Mesh and, and how it's uh, kind of come into my, come into my life. Um, I was originally uh, more of an application developer. I was doing full stack and front end development for many years. And <clears throat> I was actually kind of doing a lot of learning on my own at home, um, trying out new tools, new processes, things like that. And I got started using uh, Google App Engine and Heroku a lot. And I really liked those tools because they made me feel so productive. I was so... Um, focused on my application and I could kind of just let the uh, complexity of deployment really get figured out by those tools. Um, but the disappointing thing is, is I would, I would be so productive when I was learning and building on my own, but then when I went into the office, uh, I had to start dealing with AWS and, and EC2 and deploying to EC2, and there's all these complexities that start coming about. And Docker really made those uh, problems seem solvable, right? It really like planted the seed of this idea is like, oh, we could actually build something like a Heroku, like a Google App Engine, but that I could use in the enterprise. And that was super exciting and super empowering uh, because it's so, it's so nice as a software developer to be able to have the right tool for the job so you can feel so much more productive. Um, so... Uh, Docker really kind of entered my life and, and switched me uh, and actually wore my Docker shirt today as a as kind of a throwback. It's, it moved my uh, focus from the application to solving this problem of how can we make it easier for applications, for developers uh, to get their, their software out there. And uh, one of the things that really stuck out to me was this feature in Docker called linking. And what it let you do is create an alias from one container to, to another, such that you could uh, kind of create this communication channel between them. So you could say, link a DB container into a web app container, and then the web app can just refer to the DB container as DB. It doesn't need to know like IP addresses or, or port, you know, or, any, or anything like that. Well, it would need to know the port still. Um, but it wouldn't have to know like what address it was on the network, which was cool. Um, so, because up to that point, uh, well, that, what, what that did is it kind of planted this idea in my mind. Because up to that point, applications always had to kind of mutate to the environment that they were deployed in, right? We use config files or environment variables to set the connection strings for, for our, our dependencies. Uh, so you'd have to say like, oh, the, the database is at this address on this port. So it's either localhost when you're doing development, or maybe when you're in the you're deployed in the cloud, it's a DNS name or another IP address, an off box machine. Um, and so you'd always have to kind of be able to mutate. And this uh, this linking thing, and now it didn't really solve the problem, but it just planted this idea of, oh, maybe instead of the application always having to mutate to the environment it's deployed in, maybe we can get it to the point where the environment can mutate. Uh, to the application. Maybe the infrastructure is where this problem can be solved. And I think service mesh is particularly well suited to add these types of capabilities. So when I think of service mesh, I think of uh, four verticals of connectivity, uh, reliability, observability, and security. And all four of those things as it, as it you know, relates to, to network traffic, um, they're all things that we can handle at the infrastructure layer to make it that much easier for developers, to make it that much easier to build high quality, high, highly reliable, highly secure software. Uh, and I'm just so excited for what uh, the future holds um, for, app, for cloud native applications and specifically how the service mesh uh, can be there to, to help solve them. Um, so if we can switch back to my slides. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, a little bit about me and my journey. Um, 
for today, we're going to be hearing from some great speakers. Uh, we're going to be hearing from the leaders of, of, this, of the service mesh space, which is great. Uh, get to hear their vision, uh, where their projects are going, uh, or how they see uh, the space evolving. We're also going to hear from a lot of uh, people building on top of service mesh, uh, both for their applications at home uh, or in the office, and then also uh, a lot of use cases for service mesh in academia. So we're going to have a couple talks um, from people uh, that are using service mesh to, uh, in teaching and for projects uh, inside of the academic world. Uh, so super excited for the the group of people we have speaking today. Go word cloud and see what came out. Uh, I didn't do any like post editing on this, so some of these things are kind of raw. So I apologize for that. Um, you can see a couple of things that probably don't make a lot of sense out of context. Um, but anyways, I thought this would be a kind of a neat sneak peek into uh, into what the content that we're going to see today. So uh, service meshes is right there in the front. Perfect, means we're at least a little bit on target. Uh, we got Linkerd, Istio, Envoy, you know, great. Sounds like we're gonna be hearing quite a bit about those things, which is awesome. Kubernetes, uh, VMs and multi-cluster, excited. So we got some hybrid environments potentially, and also uh, multi-cluster, right? If we're gonna have multiple Kubernetes environments, uh, which is something my team's tackling soon. So that should be pretty cool. Uh, chaos, right? Oh, there's a lot we could do for chaos testing and service mesh. I can, I can see it. Uh, monolithic apps, microservice architectures, based service mesh. That's awesome. Uh, security posture, automatic mutual TLS. So, uh, a good, a good amount of content, uh, here today, which is, this is already kind of getting my, uh, uh, mouth watering a little bit to, to hear what's going on here. So, uh, pretty exciting. Uh, category wise, um, so we definitely wanted to get a little bit of stuff that's like under the hood and technical. So we're gonna hear about core development and security. Um, we're also gonna hear about performance. We definitely are gonna be, uh, I'm sure as more and more people are adopting this in production, uh, they're gonna be more worried about like what performance trade-offs am I making with service mesh? Um, so we're gonna hear about that. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm excited about multi-cluster. So we have, a, I think a lot of people, a lot of other people are as well, because we got a lot of talks on that. And that's definitely been kind of a, uh, a buzzword in the, in the communities uh, lately that I've seen. Uh, monitoring, right? It's key. I think it's probably one of the most important pieces of service mesh is getting that visibility into what's happening with your applications. Uh, and then lastly, we wanted to save a lot of space for production use cases, right? We have way more people adopting service mesh and getting it into production. So I'm super excited to hear uh, about more production use cases. Uh, lastly, I have a few shout outs. Um, I wanna say thank you to uh, Lindsay and the rest of the Linux Foundation. They have been critical in putting together uh, the conference today. Um, yeah, I can, I can probably say safely on behalf of the whole program committee, uh, thank you to Lindsay. She really made the process uh, super clear and she really led the way uh, to get everyone uh, together and organized. So thank you so much to Lindsay. Uh, I'm sure there's a ton of people working with her at the Linux Foundation, so thank you that, to them as well. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into to putting these conferences together, um, especially in the times of COVID. So thank you so much to them. Uh, I'd also like to say thank you to Kong. Um, it's critical that we have sponsorship for these uh, conferences as well. Uh, and thank you so much to Kong for stepping up and being the diamond sponsor for today's uh, uh, conference. Uh, and I think that we're going to hear from them shortly. Uh, I'll just leave with kind of one little uh, parting thought. Um, it's been a long journey, I think, uh, getting, uh, you know, getting service mesh out there, starting to unlock some of these capabilities. Uh, and sometimes it can feel like we're moving uh, kind of slowly, right? I mean, I, I think I had these first kinds of thoughts and we're just playing around with the ideas of what we could do with, with sidecar containers and whatnot, uh, like six years ago, maybe. Now. <laughs> so it kind of feels like it's going slow sometimes. But uh, I always remember the saying of, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think we're going to make it pretty far as a community. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm excited for what the future holds. Uh, and I'm more excited about the conversations that we're going to have today, um, meeting with some like-minded people, trying to solve some of the same problems. 
so I'll catch up with the rest of you inside of uh, uh, the talks. All right. Have a great day.